welcome to Mr. C's presentation on fractions. Today we're going to learn what a fraction is. We're going to learn how to visualize it. We're not going to learn how to do anything with it really. Maybe compare sizes. But we're going to learn how to visualize how big a fraction is in our head. Go ahead and ask me. Why do we have to learn this, Mr. C? You keep showing us things. I don't want to learn. Why do I need to learn stuff? Well, it's going to help you when you're breaking things up into pieces. Fractions are is all about pieces. A fraction is a piece. So if you're cutting things up or breaking things into groups, you're learning about fractions or you're using fractions, so you better learn about them. Uh, fractions are all around you. So if you know what they are, you'll be able to identify them more quickly. And then finally, cooking. You ever cooked anything? Open up a recipe book. Quick, pause the computer and go run to the closest recipe book. Open it up. It is filled with fractions. Half a cup of sugar, quarter cup of salt, I don't know, uh, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. All right? There's fractions all over in cookbooks. So if you cook, and you should, or maybe one day you're gonna, uh, then you're using fractions. Sometimes you have to add or subtract them, okay? So let's do this. We're gonna take a look at my favorite kind of fraction. Pizza. What, pizza is fractions? Well, if you cut it up into pieces, you're cutting it up into fractions. We're gonna take a look at a few important words too. Um, first, denominator. I'm sorry, numerator. Dur, punch me in the head. First word is numerator. And the second word, is denominator. So, when you see a fraction, there is a number on the top, okay? The number on the top is called the numerator. And then there is a number on the bottom, which is called the denominator. Do you know how I remember this? There's a D here in denominator. Der, D, der. Well, down starts with D, so D, denominator, down. Down denominator D, 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 okay? So the d word, the D word, is on the bottom because it goes down to the bottom, okay? I also made it blue because cold stuff generally comes to the bottom of like a solution and red stuff goes to the top. So I made the numerator red and the denominator blue if that helps you at all, okay? But anyways, we're gonna start cutting this pizza up into fractions. I'm gonna show you what the fractions look like and you're gonna be able to visualize the size. So let's start with a nice, easy fraction. Let's start with fourths. So if you cut anything into four equal sizes, now I couldn't just cut these into any size I want. I can't just cut little pieces and big pieces. These pieces all have to be the same. If I cut them, if I cut a pizza into four equal sizes, I have cut it into fourths, okay? Now this pizza could be anything. It could be a table. If I cut a table into four equal pieces, I cut it into fourths, okay? Let's take a look at another one. <sighs> Let's say I have a second pizza, and I cut this pizza into eight pieces. Whoa, Mr. C, you're so good at cutting pizza into fractions. Yeah, I have practice. Okay, I've cut this into eight pieces now. Each one of these pieces is an eighth, okay? So we've got our numerator is one, our denominator is eight, and these piece, this piece is one eighth of a pizza. Now look at this. Which is larger? One eighth or one fourth? Now you're looking at these pictures and you're going, I know the answer to that. But think back to like a few minutes ago before these pictures were up. Would have you known that? A lot of times, my students and their downfall is they look at the number and go, eight is bigger than four. Yeah, it is. But one eighth is not bigger than one fourth. Why? Well, the denominator shows us how many pieces we cut it up into. So think about it in terms of pizza. If you and a bunch of buddies sat down, right? Would you rather share a pizza with seven buddies and yourself, with eight people? Or would you rather share a pizza with th three people and yourself, four people all together? Yeah, four people all together. You'd get way more pizza. You cut it into less pieces. And with eighths, you cut it into more pieces. The pieces are smaller. So the larger the denominator gets, 
the smaller the pieces are. I'm gonna write that down. And if you have a pencil and a piece of paper on you, maybe you should write that down too. The bigger the denominator, the denominator, I'm gonna put a comma here, maybe it shouldn't be there, but whatever. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. Okay, that's important. That's important, and I'm gonna show it to you again. Okay, let's take a look at this pizza. <sighs> let's make the denominator even bigger. Let's make these, this pizza tenths. Okay, we're gonna separate this one, and I'm gonna show you one tenth. So in order to show you one tenth, first I have to make 10 tenths. All right, Whew, I've made halves. And then when I make tenths, I do a little wedge in the middle, and then cut the big piece in half. Cut the big piece in half. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just have to do that again, and I'll have tenths. There's a little wedge. And then cut the big one in half. Cut the big one in half. Phew. These might be the best tenths I've ever made. One tenth. Look, the denominator is bigger, but the piece is smaller. Okay? I'd rather have an eighth than a tenth, and I would certainly rather have a fourth than a tenth. As a matter of fact, I'd rather have a fourth than an eighth and a tenth put together because it's bigger than both of them put together. Now, if I add a few tenths in there, let's say I had one, two, three. Let's say I were going to eat one, two, three, four tenths, right? Because sometimes you get to eat more than one piece. Well, sometimes, right, fractions have different numbers on top. Let's say I were to give you four of these pieces, one, two, three, four you would have four tenths. The number on the top is how many we have or how many we're looking at, and the number on the bottom is how many there are in a whole all together. So there's 10 pieces all together, you have four of them. So you have four tenths. All right, let's look at one more. Let's cut it up into, I'm gonna do a smaller one this time. Even bigger pieces, or I should say, what looks to be a smaller fraction, a smaller denominator, but the pieces are, are bigger. Okay, so let's look at, what would you call these pieces? This would be one. Well, how many pieces do, do we have? Three. One third. Okay, this is the biggest piece we have so far. So even though the denominator is small, that just means the piece is bigger, okay? One third is much larger than a tenth, an eighth, and even a fourth, okay? So, if you're gonna take one thing from this, take that when the denominator is larger, the pieces are actually smaller. Also, a numerator is the number on top, and the denominator is the number on the bottom, okay? All right, I hope that this helped. Let's quickly, ah, go over what we learned. Okay, well, we learned a few things. Numerator's the number on the top. Yay, you're so smart. Denominator's the number on the bottom. Oh, gosh, you guys are definitely graduating college when this is all over. And uh, third, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. And fractions are pieces. Okay, if you're dealing with a fraction, you're dealing with something that's been cut up into pieces. Sometimes you have a lot of those pieces, sometimes you only have a few, but you have to think of them as being cut up into different sized pieces, okay? Yes, Mr. C, I wanna try it. You do, you wanna try it? All right, I guess you can try it, okay? Get a piece of paper, find a spot to do this. Uh, first thing that I want you to do is draw a shape. Now be careful of the shape that you draw because you're going to cut it into four pieces and show me a fourth. I might have just spoiled that there, but I want you to show me or to color in one fourth of a shape that you draw. Remember, those pieces that you make have to be equal sizes. You can't have a small piece and a large piece. They all have to be the same size when you cut it up into fourths. So some shapes you can't use. Like I wouldn't use a triangle. It would be really hard to cut a triangle into four equal pieces. I'm not saying it's impossible. 
Okay, don't get angry at me, math teachers. It's not impossible, but it's hard. So when you're doing it the first time, I would use like a circle or a square or a rectangle. Okay? All right. And secondly, a word problem. No! Yes! Pretend that your teacher brought in your favorite kind of pizza to school for lunch. That teacher told you you can either have one-tenth of a pizza, one-eighth of a pizza, one-fourth, or one-third of the pizza. Which would you choose? And then the most important part, explain yourself. Why would you choose that? Okay? So tell me the piece that you would pick, and then tell me why. All right? And then, I don't know, check your work with somebody much smarter than you. Or maybe only a little smarter than you. You got a big brother? You got a mom? You got a dad? You got a grandma? You got a grandpa? You got to have a teacher somewhere in your life. Okay? Do these two problems, and then ask somebody who knows if you did them correctly. If you know me, ask me. Okay? Are you excited? We're going to start adding and subtracting these things soon. We're going to start converting them into other fractions. Okay? So it's important that you're able to put the size of fractions into your head when you're looking at them and trying to do other things with them. All right? Good luck.